Hello. In this video, I'm going to walk through my typical developer workflow, what I do day to day to get things done uh, on projects that I'm working on, as well as how I collaborate with others uh, to check code, do code reviews, uh, run tests locally, check for problems on other branches, things like that. So let's dig right in. The first thing that I do is I bring up my terminal. So in this case, it's WESTERM. I really like WESTERM a lot. Uh, I think it's one of the best looking and fastest terminals I've ever, ever used. And I jump right into a Tmux session. So I use TM, uh, a quick script I wrote to get to the available Tmux sessions I have or to create a new session like I do in this case. So in this video, I'm going to use a project called XState Meme, which is a project I did for a, a conference talk that uses XState and creates memes. So I'll create a new project called that, and it just drops me in a new Tmux session. And I put everything into a uppercase developer folder on my Mac. The only reason I do that is because when you're in your when you're the cell, the few cases that you're in Finder, developer gets a special hammer automatically. I don't know. Just started doing it. Uh, anyway, let's create the project here. So another thing that I do is I rely on scripts from my dot files. And so I'm going to create another tmux session called dot files. And then I'll use the Z command to quickly jump over into my dot files. And this is where I'm going to use a script uh, that's in the bin directory called git bear clone. And this script allows me to quickly create a bear repository uh, and check it out in such a way that I can easily manage it. And it's, uh, it's pretty because I use git work trees for everything. And so I'll explain kind of what this does. But the, the gist of it is that a bear repo is just a repo that you clone that doesn't actually create its own work tree or working directory. So then I'll use work trees to create those working directories for everything that I work on from there. And so this does a lot of nonsense, but the, the main things that it does is it creates a work tree uh, by cloning with dash dash bear. And then it automatically adjusts the uh, fetch refs for everything. And it puts it into a location uh, that is going to be the, the folder that I create and it'll put it into a dot bear directory. So instead of having everything just plainly in that folder, uh, all of the contents of the dot get directory in that folder, they'll be in a hidden dot bear effect, uh, dot bear folder. And then I will create a file called dot get that will just specify a get dir to go to that bear location. And so that's what it'll do. Let's take a look at what this does. We'll switch back to the XState meme project. Uh, and what we'll do is we will make a directory called XState meme, and then we'll CD into that. Now we're in here, there is nothing in that directory. And so we need to get the actual project. So let's go to GitHub. It's X state meme. And in here, so I'll just grab the, uh, the SSH here for it. So we can clone it and we can just do get bear clone. And because this is in my bin, uh, which is on my path and it starts with get dash, you can just run it with the get command and it'll act like just another command for that. And so I will say, uh, get X state meme. And so we'll clone that here. Let me authorize it. And I use, I put all of my SSH keys into one password. So that's what that was. It was asking for my fingerprint so that it could use the SSH key to grab that. All right, so it created a bear repository. So now if we do a list inside of this project, we see nothing, but if we show hidden files, there's two files, a folder and a file actually, the .get file and a bear file, so, or a bear folder. So if we look at that, the .get just points to bear, and then bear just looks like a normal .get. It just has everything in there for us. 
Now, the cool thing that I can do is I can do things like a get fetch from in here and I can pull things out. There's still nothing created. Uh, and so that's the way I like to work. Everything is kind of in this folder. And then if I want to work with something, uh, then I can create a work tree from here quickly to do that. And so I'll just do get work tree add and I'll call it main just to check out main. And that will create a work tree called main. And then I'll just say, check out the branch main in there. And so when we do that, now we have a main directory. So this is where I will actually work from. Uh, I'll just load everything from within here and work. So this is really nice because now I can do things like I have this totally and completely separate from everything else. I can npm install inside of this directory. And this is where I would typically have like main checked out just so I can do like a fresh check all the time. So this is like one of the more permanent work trees that I have around in each project is the main just to show like, hey, this is this is the quote unquote good state of the project. So then from there, I would usually create a new work tree and I would do something like dash B and then I'll usually prefix it with my name and then I'll do something like, uh, we'll, new, we'll do you know new feature. And that'll create a new branch called new feature. And then uh, we'll call that new feature. That's the folder that or the, the work tree that we're gonna actually create for that. And then I'll say base it on origin main. So it'll just base it on what the, the main is for that. And so now, we look, we have two work trees. So I can quickly switch between the two and I might have them even checked out as different um, as, as different sessions within Tmux. And so we could go um, and rename this session. Oops. Rename the window to uh, X state meme main. And then I can just do a new session and we'll call it X date meme new feature. And now if I go to my list of available Tmux sessions, I've got X date meme and the new feature. So I can quickly jump between them. The really nice thing about this uh, is that it allows me to work on one thing at a time. And then when I'm not working on it, it's completely hidden and I don't have to look at any other pieces of it. So, I mentioned that uh, main was a work tree that I typically keep around. Another one that I will typically keep around all the time is one called uh, review. And so in this, I will just call it review and I'll check out origin main again um, within there. But now when I'm in review, the really nice thing about this is this is just like a, a place that I can go to do PR reviews and I can check out branches easily within that. And I can use the GH command to check out, you know, a, a different PR from there. So I can say like check out 34 or whatever. Um, oops, GH PR, check out something like that. And then that'll automatically just check it out right to here and then I can run it and, and test it. So I can be doing that, you know, I can be running tests or, or doing things while in another branch, another session, I've got everything set up so that I can just run it from here. So I'll go back into X state meme and I'll go into new feature and I'll install from here, but I can be running and working in this session simultaneously while I'm working in another session and I'm not stepping on it. I'm not, you know, adding files or changing things or having to stash anything. I can just leave everything as is switch over to another work tree, work from there, and everything is, is totally fine. And then I can just stop that, go back to the other one and uh, work from there. So it's totally just a nice, easy flow for all of that. I really like that. So when I'm in here, uh, the other thing that I, I typically do is I'm working on, uh, I'll be working on some new feature and let's just go in and change, make some changes. So I use NeoVim for all of that. I've got everything installed. We'll just go into here and we can make some, 
some quick changes. So there's a log statement in here. I'll go ahead and delete that. Probably don't want that in here. And oh, when I hit save, Prettier went and changed everything. So that's fine. Uh, and when we go to work with this, I, I do all of my get from the command line as well. And what I do is I use lazy git, which I open in a floating tmux window anywhere. So in any project that I'm in at all, I can just say uh, prefix g and it brings up the get uh, the lazy get for this project. And then I can go in and use the commands within here to, you know, quickly uh, stage that change. And then I can do a commit and I can say uh, formatting and remove console log statements. So we'll just have that be our commit summary. We'll just say refactor and that changes it. And then we can push that up if we want to. Uh, I won't for this in this case. Uh, and then I just hit Q to close that. And I can bring it up at any point, at any point by just hitting prefix G again. So that's really cool. So another thing that I will typically do is as I'm working, uh, I'll be making those changes and I'll probably need to run the server, right? So uh, as you can see up here, I've got everything kind of set up to be, um, you know, the main window within Tmux is my Vim session. So it uses the Vim, um, the Vim symbol there, uh, but I'll probably need to run a server. And so I'll usually just create another window within here. Oops. And then in here, uh, you know, it automatically puts me right back where I was, so I don't have to keep CDing around to other directories or anything. Uh, but then this is where I can just do things like npm start to start the project and kick it off. And now I'm at, you know, localhost 3000. So I can bring up my editor or my, my um, browser to test that. I typically don't use Safari for day-to-day -day testing. Uh, I use a developer browser called Sizzy to do that. And let me just bring that up and show what it looks like. Looks a bit like this. And so I can just bring up localhost 3000 and load up the project from here. And then of course it's got its dev tools and everything. Um, but yeah, this is typically how I work. I will have this over on another monitor uh, while I'm working on my main monitor here in Vim and switch back over here. So now the server that's running and any other commands, you know, if I have to have another server, maybe I want to run like a storybook or something. Uh, I can run that over here. This project, I don't think, oh, it does have a storybook actually. Uh, so I can run storybook, get it set up over here and I can have them running simultaneously uh, right here. And then when I want to go back to my editor, I just switch back over here. Now for quick commands that I want to do, maybe like running tests or something like that, I'll typically create a split within my window that's typically uses Vim. I'll either have it on the, the side here or I'll put it at the bottom uh, like this and kind of work with it like that. Uh, kind of depends on what I'm doing. Typically tests, I like to have more vertical space, so I'll have it over here like that. And then I can just do things like, you know, NPM test and, and run it over here. This project doesn't have tests, so I need to, to add some of those. But uh, that's typically how I'll, I'll run that. And then when I'm working, uh, I do also use uh, the, the GH command uh, quite a bit. So I use, you know, normal get for, for like committing things. But then if I wanted to create a PR, I'll do things like GHPR create. And uh, depending on how complex I want it to be, I'll either create it here in the, the terminal or I will uh, just do dash web and that'll open up a browser for me um, so that I can start doing that right away. So there, created a new one. It pushed up my changes, created a new one and you can see the changes that are there. So that's typically how I work. Uh, it's, you know, a quick rundown uh, the main drivers of everything are obviously the terminal, uh, but also working within work trees. That's a, a really important part of my day-to-day -day process, just to, to manage everything, to quickly be able to jump in and out of projects and to, 
um, to, to work on things kind of simultaneously if I need to, because I do a lot of like code reviewing and things like that or, or checking, you know, there's a problem in this branch. Let's go find out what's going on. And I can just kind of pause the work on one branch, switch over to the other one, go run it, check it, test it, and then come back. Uh, and, and that's really nice. And I pretty much always have another uh, Tmux session open for my dot files because I'm constantly tweaking them throughout the day as I go. So hope this helps. Just a quick video rundown. And if you have any questions, nicknesy.com.